Sorry, now I'm distracted. <laughs> Do we seem good? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Well, everybody that is online, thank you for you know sticking with us and giving us a second to work out the sound difficulties and troubleshooting and everything like that. So um, hopefully you were able to hear a little bit about my story and how it got started. If for any reason they didn't hear that and you want to reach out and get a little bit more information, then you know feel free. My my information is going to be all on the last slide and everything like that. So anyway, so we're talking a little bit about biofeedback. And maybe we're going to advance to the next slide. Maybe not. <laughs> OK, we'll just do that. So, um, so the program that I use is technically called eBox. It is made by a company called from Zyto, uh, based out of Utah. So this software program that I use, um, it's a software program, has the hand cradle. It also has a headset, and I'll show you a little bit more about that as we go along. Um, they technically call it biocommunication because it's reading and sending information. But if you talk about biocommunication, like nobody even has any idea what that is. A lot of people don't know what biofeedback is either, but it's been around a little longer. So I generally just refer to it as biofeedback, even though it is much more uh, in depth and sophisticated than you know, what it used to be. So um, the hand cradle, some people will ask, uh, uses a galvanic skin response. So it is reading and sending signals throughout the whole body and the whole energy system of the body with, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about energy and what I mean by that, but it's also listening to tones, vibrations, different frequencies, and all the different biomarkers in the body. So I want to go through just some of the, um, I didn't realize it was going to have separate pictures like that. So uh, I just want to give you a little bit of the technical information on it and give you some of that overview. And then we'll get into, you know, why is all of this kind of stuff important? But I figured it would help be helpful to know. So our body communicates within itself with energy. So some people have a negative thought process about energy and what that actually means. But honestly, if you think about some very simplistic terms, our nervous system communicates with energy. If you go to look at um, MRIs or electrocardiograms, it's electrical. It's the energy of the body and how it communicates. Even way back in science class, the nervous system is sending those little firing signals through the synapses in our body. So when I talk about energy of the body, hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. And I'll, and I'll explain a little more about why those energies matter and how that makes a difference in our nervous system as we go along. But the whole point of this is releasing the triggers, the blockages, as I generally like to refer to as congestion from all the stresses, the thoughts, the mindsets, the perceptions, the experiences that we've had that creates this tension and confusion congestion in our mind and our body and our energy system as a whole. And we want to release that stuff to create balance because within balance is when our body's own innate intelligence of healing can come in. Um, with any disease, symptom, diagnosis, whatever you want to call it, it creates a energy down uh, condition within us, within our mind, within our physical body. So I like to talk to people about, are we doing things to make our energy up or are we doing things to create our energy to go down? Because the higher our energy, our frequency, our vibration can be in our body, 
the better health we have, the more we can get to places of healing. And when we have things that bring our energy down, then we have illness, we have symptoms, we have congestion in the body from lots of different things. So I'm obviously going to talk to you about biofeedback and why I love that so much, but I also want to give you an idea that there's lots of things that we can do that bring our energy up. So we've all heard of laughter and how healing and helpful laughter can be when we're sick, right? Because we're bringing our energy up. Love, gratitude, positive thinking all bring our energy up. Healthy eating, healthy lifestyles in general, healthy foods the supplements, the homeopathics, essential oils, all these lovely things bring our energy up. Stress management, uh, biofeedback, it just by itself, a lot of people like to use it as a stress management tool, and I'll touch base on that a little bit as we go along. When, when we talk about our stresses or our illnesses while doing biofeedback, it helps us to release the triggers, the blockages, the congestion that we've had from all these stresses, because those stresses create a cellular memory. And that cellular memory creates more and more congestion in the body. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go along too. So we want to be very aware of the things that bring our energy down and avoid those as much as we can. <laughs> now, we all have and awareness, and we know that we live in the world that we live in, and especially the last couple of years with all the stresses that we've had for so many different reasons, right? So we know that not all stress can be avoided, that not all things that bring our energy down can be avoided, but as much awareness as we can to bring our energies up, bring us to places of healing and health a lot easier and better. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the body. Um, so the first little picture I put up here is your body is talking to you. Are you listening? So often we are trained, I guess you could say, in society to ignore our symptoms. But those symptoms are clues from the body that, hey, something is going on. Even pain in and of itself is a clue. Why do we have that pain? Can we do something about it? So, you know, what is your body's talking? Are you listening? Um, what is happening with our emotions, with our thoughts is not just in our brain. It has a physiological response through our whole body. You may or may not have heard that emotions do have a physical impact on the body. So there's lots of information online about this, but I thought this was kind of a cute little picture that brings it. Um, anger fires up the heart and liver. So we know that anger is generated and also has a big impact on our liver. But all the emotions, worry has a lot to do with your stomach. You know, if you are worried about something, how often have you had that oh my gosh, I'm so nervous or worried and upset to my stomach. We feel it and we know it. Sometimes we just haven't associated those, those symptoms with the emotion. When we are working on our emotional health, when we can change our perceptions of our stresses, our symptoms, all the things that are going on in our life, it truly does start changing our life. So I mentioned a little bit ago about this program and this biofeedback uses energy. It uses uh, frequencies, tones, vibrations. And I thought it might just be nice for you to kind of get an idea of what in the world does all that mean? So we can look and see that the brain's frequency, a healthy brain is at 72 megahertz. The heart is, runs between 67 and 70. All these emotions have their own frequency. So again, as I was talking earlier about like love, joy, um, gratitude, those are all very high frequencies, laughter. So when we are trying to bring our energy up, getting in touch with all those 
Our lovely positive emotions helps to bring our energy up. And remember again, uh, energy up has a lot to do with health and healing, wellness in general. So all these lovely things that we can try to do to bring that energy up. Um, there is a lovely doctor out there. Her name is Dr. Caroline Lee. She is a neuro um, scientist. She has another title that I am forgetting at the moment, but anyway, she's a neuroscientist. She has done years and years and years and years of studying about the brain and emotional connections. She's got tons of free YouTubes that you can go and look her up and listen to all of her information. She's got lots and lots of great stuff out there. But according to her estimates and studies, she says between 75 and 90% of physical, a mental, physical, and behavioral illness comes from toxic thinking. So, you know, that being said, what can we do about it? Because it has a huge impact. Um, if you are not aware, there are tons and tons of books that also talk about our emotional health and what to do about it so that we can get better. And these are just a few of my books that I reference quite often. Um, so hopefully it, you can see those. If anybody wants to know more information or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. This is another great uh, resource. Um, probably most of you are familiar with The Truth About Cancer. They've done a couple of different docu-series out there. And so they have twice in their docu-series brought up about Evox biofeedback. And I believe both interviews are uh, from this Dr. Cowden and you can just go to Truth About Cancer and look up his videos. They're, they're right there online. This is a screenshot of that part. But you know, he again talks about uh, in order to heal, you've got to be able to deal with the emotions and the impact that those have had so that we can release, so that we can forgive, so that we can move forward in a positive and healthy way from those past experiences. So these are all a few of his bullet points, letting go of the guilt, letting go of worthiness, negative thoughts and words that doctors have spoken over us. If you have any chronic illness, obviously with cancer, but any chronic illness, um, sometimes the words that the doctors speak over us can really have a negative impact on our emotional health. And so that is definitely something that I always want to work with people on and talk to them about because we want to hear their words. We want to have their wisdom, obviously, but we don't want to get caught up on the negative triggers that that can be associated with that, right? So, um, if we, so what happens if we don't do anything about it, right? We stay stuck in our old mindsets. We stay stuck in our health. We stay stuck, 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 right? <laughs> and so if we don't have awareness, if we don't do something, nothing changes. And so this is all about first becoming aware of what some of those different stresses are, what some of the mindsets are, what some of our belief systems or even patterns we've had are so that we can make those internal changes for external changes to happen. Um, changing the emotional, mental, vibrational energy inside us is where that, that health and healing and all those good positive things that we are wanting to happen to us. Um, this little slide down here in the corner talks about progress is impossible without change. And those that cannot change their minds cannot change. So if you don't change anything, nothing will change. So I highly encourage you to please, as you are working on your physical health, also work on your mental and emotional health. So I want to give a couple of analogies now because it's, it's, hard to understand how beneficial biofeedback can be if we don't have some frame of reference. So I have a couple of different analogies that hopefully they will make sense to you. So as I mentioned, 
I'm going to use some broad terms. So stress, stress in the sense of anything and everything that had happened to us. Something as simple as getting pulled over for a ticket to uh, a death in the family, a divorce, a illness. Stress is big and small, okay? Again, I'm going to refer to congestion as the triggers, the blockages, the symptoms it creates, all the different things as congestion, okay? And if we, uh, and then pathways, I want to explain pathways. Again, the communication within the mind and body are pathways of communication, okay? So if we think about the stress as a little piece of trash, or that little cellular memory that got stuck somewhere that we want to release so that we don't get triggered again. We start out as babies in our life with no trash on the beach, right? So we were just born and everything's all hunky-dory and things like that. But then we have a couple of little stresses that happen to us. Doesn't matter the age. It could be from the time we were a baby, could be anywhere in our childhood. It could be from anywhere, anyone, but we start kind of building up a little bit of trash on the beach of our life. And if we don't clean it up, well, look at the beach. What happens to that congestion? It just piles up and piles up and piles up. And no wonder we get so easily triggered and have blockages and issues with stress, with anxiety, with things that happen in our life, because we have so much trash that has built up. So that is one of my examples. Um, another example that I use often has to do with referring to the pathways in our body, our neural pathways, as as congestion, if we think about that as traffic. So we have start out through life with all these lanes of traffic wide open, right? Everything's communicating well within our body and we're healthy and we're vibrant and all good, right? And then stress after stress after stress, all this starts bringing us down to this one skinny little lane of traffic. And we've all been in traffic jams where we're like, get me out of here. It feels horrible. And we get to the other side of the traffic jam and it's like, whew, ah, I feel so much better, right? So that traffic jam could be construction. It can be weather related. It can be from whatever. But doing the biofeedback is like getting to the other side of that traffic jam. It's hard to explain why. It's a hard to explain how, but you get to the other side and you're like, I feel better. So that is another one of my <laughs> analogies that I like to use. Um, because when we clear out that congestion, that stuck emotional energy, the triggers, that cellular memory, we're changing our belief systems, our mindsets, our perceptions, this new awareness that we have brings us to a place where we now have awareness, we now have choice, we can now respond versus react. And that is huge in your emotional healing journey. And I call it a journey because life happens and we are all on a journey to try to get better and better no matter what stage of health we are in, we are all on a journey. And we want to release and heal all those stresses from past and current. So I love this picture of the iceberg because as I put on here, I think a picture speaks a thousand words. If you think about the iceberg as being part of your mind, we are conscious of a very small little piece. But what is under the surface dictates a whole big area around how we respond and what we do. You don't see it, you don't necessarily know about it, 
but it is a huge piece of what's happening in our unconscious mind, because that is what rules our mindsets, our belief systems, our perceptions, and how in the world do we deal with the unconscious part of our mind, right? It would be great if we could just flip a switch and say, ooh, I need to know what I need to work on right now. Um, well, the biofeedback is a great way to communicate between conscious and unconscious. And let me try to explain that a little bit more for a minute. So our unconscious mind, there are estimates that our unconscious mind can think thousands of thoughts per minute, like 5,000 or more per minute, which is hard to even imagine. <laughs> our, that filters down to our conscious mind thinks about 500 or more minute, uh, words per minute. That's still a lot. But you know that that can be true because you can be talking about one thing and thinking something very different, right? So we all have experienced that. We know that that can happen. So that thousands of thoughts unconsciously filters down to about 500 thoughts consciously. That filters down even more to about 150 words per minute that we speak. So the beauty of this particular program and why I love it so much is because as we are having a conversation about whatever your stress is, your conscious and unconscious mind is all communicating and filtering down. So let's say, for example, we're talking about anxiety and you're explaining to me why you have anxiety and what it feels like and the different things that have happened in your life that have created anxiety. Your subconscious mind is firing off example after example, memory after memory, uh, emotion to after emotion that are all related to what we're speaking about at the moment. So we are digging in deeper, even though consciously we're just having a conversation about anxiety, we are subconsciously dealing with many different examples, uh, both current and from the past. So it's very phenomenal way to work through some of the conscious and unconscious thoughts. Um, another analogy that I have given before is when you are doing these sessions, because it releases so many of the triggers from the past, brings us so much clarity to our mind, helps us to have a bigger perspective, help us to think about solutions so much easier. It's kind of like uh, having blinders on a horse. You know, again, back to kind of that traffic congestion, all we can see is right here in front of us. But as we do biofeedback, it's like opening up the blinders on this horse and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have aha moments. I have more clarity. I'm able to think things through. I can see a bigger perspective. There's the whole emotional release that happens. I mean, there's so many positives that I have a long list on my website of all the positives that people have mentioned to me. And honestly, actually, after a couple of years, I quit writing down all of them because the list became so long. But anyways, um, you know, relaxation, calm, people feel lighter, they feel peaceful, all of those wonderful things. I also like to talk to people about being able to be in a place of a neutral position. Because if we are not triggered over and over again, let's say, for instance, um, it's the negative words from the doctor. And every time we go in, they have something to say, and we feel that fear bubble up inside of us. If we are not so easily triggered, we can hear with a different set of ears. That sounds kind of funny to say it that way, but um, we can hear them because we're not triggered so much by our fear. We're still listening to what they say, but now we have a um, solutions-oriented mindset. So now we can say, hmm, okay, I hear you. But what are we going to do about it? So uh, mindset. 
um, a lot, a lot involved in that. So again, just kind of some of the different things that the biofeedback can help with. I could go on and on and on about this part of it, but helping to eliminate the worry, the stress, negative outlooks, improving your mindset, your belief system, your perceptions. I cannot express that enough times or with more passion to tell you how much that can help on your healing journey. So, you know, please just take a moment to, you know, try to work through all of those different things because you will find, you know, great improvements on that. I want to touch base on another part of working through biofeedback sessions that I hear over and over again. So traditional counseling can be phenomenal with the right circumstances and someone to help work you through all those different pieces. But I also hear people talk about like, I get tired of talking about the same thing over and over again and re-triggering my stress over and over again. So how do we get the benefits of traditional talk therapy and work through and release the stress and tension and triggers associated with them? By doing the biofeedback, we're releasing that trigger so that we don't have to keep talking about the same thing over and over and over. It works faster and deeper. And I hear from people all the time, like I've gone through months or years of traditional therapy and I get faster results and more results by doing biofeedback than traditional therapy therapy has given by itself alone. So, um, you know, I love therapy and all the right reasons and the great things that they do, but, you know, doing some therapy and biofeedback, phenomenal. Um, so this little slide talks a little bit about, I want to get to the point of talking about having a growth mindset compared to a fixed mindset. Because again, that those perceptions, those mindsets, those belief systems within us are going to make a huge difference on your overall health. So if you think about uh, playing an instrument or a sport, you know the importance of learning how to do it right for that muscle memory. The muscle memory or the pathways that are created. So like, for instance, uh, driving a car. When we first learned how to drive our car, we had to think about every detail. We had to think about putting it in gear. We had to think about, are we pushing on the gas pedal or the brake pedal? You know, if you learned how to drive a clutch, you have to figure out the timing of getting the clutch and shifting gears at the same time. So there was a lot of thought. Now we do it pretty much unconsciously a lot of times because we know how to drive the car. Um, that's what happens with our belief systems and our patterns that we get into. So sometimes because of experiences, even if they're bad experiences, we create these pathways that we just repetitively do over and over again without some awareness of how to make that change. Leading a healthy lifestyle can be a simple example of that as well. We're so used to, um, every time we go out with our friends, we're gonna go have a hamburger and fries. Even though we know that the hamburger and fries may not be our healthiest option, that's what we do. So we just go out and we order it anyway, because that's what's the norm. Um, so getting that growth mindset and just changing some of our awareness around that can make a huge difference. Um, so those neural pathways and those muscle memories is you know, part of what I wanted to explain here because those are also true with those emotional patterns and our responses to them. And if we, with the biofeedback, can play back because at the beginning, you probably remember me saying it can read and send signals. So if we can send the body the right tones, vibrations, and frequencies, then that helps the body go through that release process 
And the software program is what is phenomenal about that is it shows me when you go into that release process and that can last for hours and sometimes days after a session. So again, a very powerful part of that. Um, and when we can recreate some of those neural pathways and that muscle memory, if you want to call it that, we can heal from those past hurts, our negative patterns, our negative thought processes, our behaviors, all of that remapping our mind, or some people like to refer to it as renewing our mind. This is where that renewal, the neuroplasticity comes into play. We used to think that the brain was fixed. And once it was like a, a brain injury, once it was damaged, it was done. We now know that that is not the case. We now know there is neuroplasticity and we can change and we can grow to create a better uh, neural pathway that serves us and functions in a, in a better way. And I have another neat analogy that I want to share with you in just a second about that. But just going back to that mindset piece of it, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Perceptions create our reality. And if we can make those changes within our mindsets, then we can change our entire life. Um, this is the analogy that I wanted to get to. So if we think about our subconscious mind as a hard drive, so that hard drive was created from the time that we were babies and young children. And if we think about that hard drive or the app or the software program that is on that hard drive and we <laughs> never upgrade it. How many of you have had an old computer that after several years, it does not work the way it used to? That's kind of what happens with us. If we do not upgrade our physical, our uh, mental and our emotional health, our software programs are not working the way they, they would. And that hard drive is out of date. And we have got to do things to upgrade our entire computer system. Um, there are, again, lots and lots of different studies. Dr. Lipton has a lot of stuff. He is the one that did a lot with emotion code. And emotion code is a very uh, effective, wonderful tool that can be used. And maybe some of you have heard about that, but it's another great tool to use for emotional health and lots of different practitioners use that. But he says there are over 90,000 times more influence from that unconscious mind than the conscious mind. And creating that limited narrow mindset creates more stress, creating a bigger impact on our health and wellness. And we don't want to repeat those bad behaviors and we want to influence our choice. We release those triggers so that we can grow, learn, and heal. Um, with our subconscious mind, we often have these mindsets of not being good enough, can't get what I want, I can't heal. This these mindsets create what we call a cognitive dissonance. And when our conscious and our unconscious and unconscious mind are not really communicating very effectively, then it can create more stress within us. We have that stress response. So again, working with the energies of the body, it helps us to calm that response down and that's what the biofeedback is doing, is reading the body so that we can calm down that response in the body, calm down that cognitive dissonance response so that you can get to that balance and your body's innate intelligence can recreate and start getting to healing. Um, going back to the uh, computer analogy, 
these viruses, if we want to call them viruses, can prevent our desires from happening because of that negative self uh, subconscious programming, because it can be powerful. Don't discount what's happening in, in the uh, unconscious part of our mind and how important it can be to heal and, you know, release extra weight to get rid of certain symptoms. All of those different things uh, can all happen when we go through the release process. And this is talking about, you know, accessing and identifying and releasing those unknown, unresolved patterns and programs and blockages. We can re release and resolve them, which is what brings us to healing. Uh, one of my clients said, this could change the whole world by getting all the hurts out. One of the quickest and most thorough ways of healing and balancing the emotions are through Evox biofeedback. And let's see, let me advance here again. I think too many. Two. There it goes. There we go. So um, I know it kind of cuts off the top up here, but that's okay. Um, the picture that I have here is even though my um, talk today is to bring about biofeedback and talk to you about emotional health, I don't want to discount the other parts of healing and health. So I like to use this disease tree as a visual example of the way that I work and many of the natural health professionals that that's how we work. So traditional medicine and traditional doctors, they want to talk about all your symptoms. So if you have hay fever or high blood pressure or whatever your symptom or illness is, they just deal with your symptoms, right? I work a little bit differently. I want to work with the roots first because then the symptoms will start taking care of themselves. And we know that Four of the basic root causes are nutritional deficiencies, toxic overloads, so detoxing and getting all that junk out, physical traumas that we've had, plus the unresolved mental and emotional stress. So if we can deal with the roots and our constitutional health, the biological terrain, our trunk gets stronger and sturdier, all the branches of the trees represent the body systems. So our cardiovascular system, our respiratory system, whatever. And then all of a sudden these symptoms start taking care of themselves. So I want to deal with any and all of those areas to really get you to true health. Um, come on. <laughs> I know, we love that. I think the next slide's bringing us up to um, having a, a healthy mindset. So it's great to go through the release process and very important for us to get rid of all the emotional congestion that we've dealt with. But we've also got to come to terms with what does the mindset of good health look like? What would it feel like for you to not have those specific symptoms that you have? What does healthy look like? What does feeling good again even feel like? What would it be like to have more energy or to have more um, vitality? So that is one of the things that I also work with, with the biofeedback is getting to a positive mindset and creating the environment because when we go through the release, as I mentioned earlier, it brings us to a place where we have choice and choice of how to recreate health is where we want to get that healthy outlook, that healthy mindset of being able to get to um, a place with health. I put this last little um, note in here because I also just want to address for a minute that I talk to people about who have any chronic illness. I know we're here talking today about cancer specifically, but this applies to any illness. Please, if you take one thing away from my talk today, please do not 
own your symptoms or your diagnosis. Because when you get so fixed on that mindset of I have this, I am that, it makes it very hard for your body to truly get to healing. So please do not own that diagnosis. So how do we even do that? Like the doctor said, I have such and such. So what I would like to suggest to you is to start saying, I have a challenge with. Because when that subconscious mind is posed with a challenge, it is looking for a solution. It is looking for ways to make it better. So if we have a challenge with nausea, if we have a challenge with headache, if we have a challenge with allergies, if we have a challenge with whatever, we are looking for ways to make ourselves get better. And the subconscious mind is looking for ways to make that happen. So have a challenge with rather than I have such and such. So what happens in a session? I'm gonna just real quick, not get into too much in depth about this, but it is often described as this is so simple and so easy, it's hard to believe that it can be so effective because really what it boils down to is either in my office or I can do these appointments remotely. So I do these appointments all over the US. Um, and actually most recently I have one of my hand cradles because I have these hand cradles that I ship all over the states usually, but even now all over the world, um, just had one down in Guam. She found out about the truth about cancer and she reached out to me for my website. So that was kind of fun. Um, but anyways, I uh, can do this remotely or locally but we connect with the hand cradle and the headset. I am plugged into uh, the software program. And if we're doing it remotely, you just plug into your computer and basically your computer works as a surrogate so that my computer can talk to the hand cradle and the headset. So it's just kind of a pass through. But basically how it is going is we are sitting down to have a conversation about whatever the illness is, whatever the stress is, whatever's going on in your life. We have a conversation and then I send some biofeedback. I have you talk a little bit more, send some biofeedback. What does that mean when I say I send biofeedback? Your hand is on the hand cradle, you hear some music in the headset and we, it just takes a couple of minutes to send the biofeedback. People often ask, what do I feel? It's kind of like radio waves or TV waves. You don't feel it, you don't see it, but it is circulating throughout your whole body, your mind and your whole energy field um, from the hand cradle um, that your hand is resting on. Um, the software program analyzes the the what it is hearing and feeling throughout your body uses those voice prints it analyzes them and it sends the biofeedback to you and the easiest way i can describe it is it's kind of like sending homeopathic frequencies back to your body and if anybody has any questions about homeopathy you know let me know but that is the early stages of medicine, what we all used to use as medicine before we had um, pharmaceuticals. So homeopathy has been around for a long time and using the frequencies of homeopathy to play that back to you. So hopefully that gives you just a quick little idea about that. And I realize now when we jumped through those that I have a slide here that talks about a couple of testimonials. There it is. That's the one that we had skipped. So I just want to share a couple of these. Um, I don't know exactly where we're at on time. We have about 10, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. So I just want to share a couple of, of these. So uh, hopefully you can read some of these other ones, but I want to share one of the stories about this gal that I had come in that was dealing with back pain and it was severe back pain. And she had gone to every doctor, chiropractor, everything you could think of. And 
she finally came to see me as a last resort of, I have tried everything else. I don't know if this is going to help, but like, I am so tired of the pain. Is there anything you could do to help? And I said, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's, you know. So anyway, so we started off doing the biofeedback. And as I mentioned, it's a conversation. We're just talking back and forth. So she starts telling me about her back pain, when it started, how it feels like, all the different things she's done. And then I send her some of the biofeedback. Well, remember me saying a little bit ago how much the biofeedback helps create clarity in your thought processes. So all of a sudden she was like, huh, I don't know why I keep thinking about it, but I keep remembering this time when I was a little girl and I fell off of the merry-go-round because this little boy had pushed me and I hurt my back in exactly the same spot of where I have this back pain now. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. And so I was picking up her explaining the story to me. And I said, okay, now let me send you some biofeedback based on what you just told me. So I send her the biofeedback on that. And she realizes that the similarity from this little boy that had pushed her off the merry-go-round and hurt her back and her boss was, you know, obviously a difference in age, but the similarities were uncomparable. She knew exactly why that had triggered that thought process for her. And so, at, again, as we talked through that, she realized, like, my boss is awesome. He has done everything. He bought her a new desk and new chairs and everything, trying to help her with the back pain. So it had nothing to do with the boss. He was a great guy. But for whatever reason, it had triggered something from her past that she was unconsciously re-triggered by when she went to work. So anyway, so we did the biofeedback. She felt better after the biofeedback. And I said, please let me know how it goes after you go back to work and, and everything like that. And after a short time, she reached back out to me. And she is like, I cannot believe how much better my back feels. So, you know, so sometimes I have these, you know, transformational stories and other times we're talking about anxiety and they're just like oh my gosh I just I can't ex explain it or describe it I just feel so much better so um I've done biofeedback on deaths in the family uh childhood traumas I don't know so many things I, I could go on and on again about that but the one other thing I would like to do to finish up with is um, one of my clients is actually here and I would like to ask her, she wrote up a little testimony, but I would like to ask her to come up and share that story with us now and her experience with all of you guys. Is it Elaine? Yes, honey. Am I looking in the right spot? Yes, okay. <laughs> so I learned about Evox actually through a docu-series and through Radical Remission. It's a book about people who cured their cancer using emotional release, nutrition, diet, exercise, et cetera. So I knew that Evox was a powerful tool and I knew that emotional release work was powerful. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't really know how to do it. Yeah. And I'm one of those people who's very triggered by therapies. When you describe the thing about, you know, some people don't like therapy. And I'm one of those people because I sort of feel like it's picking a scab off a wound, an old wound. And then I keep reactivating it, right? And I've never really, and though I've done therapy, even for my cancer, it, it really didn't work for me. And so it was actually my massage therapist who referred me to Carrie. And I didn't even know that Carrie did Evox. When she told me she did Evox as a practitioner, First of all, I was stunned that we have that here in Iowa, you know, and then I found out she was from Colorado originally. And I'm like, okay, so that's how she, you know, yeah. there's other parts of the country where more, I think, integrative techniques are leveraged a little more heavily. Yeah. And in fact, there's a very famous cancer clinic in, in the LA area that uses Evox. Yeah. So, um, so I was instantly on board. And at the time I was dealing with trying to identify the next course of treatment, which is very confronting when you've got an active cancer and you've been dealing with it for a long period of time, determining what your next treatment step is going to be is very difficult. 
And I actually combined the Evox along with uh, Gilda's Club using the Open to Options program. I did both of them together. And Open to Options sort of helped me identify what my possible treatment paths were mm -hmm. and what questions I had around them. And Evox helped me get to that decision-making point. So I, I really found it useful from that. And had I not done both of those things together, I think I would have procrastinated my treatment decision too long mm -hmm. because I already had been doing that by the time I did both, both aspects, right? So that's one of the big things I've got. I've gotten out of it. Also, I'm in, my body is in a healing state for really the first time in six years. I was diagnosed with a very rare cancer six years ago, and I've actually had two consecutive scans now uh, with shrinkage on my tumors for the first time in six years. And I really think that the emotional release work is a big part of that. And I also think that being involved in Gilda's community is a part of that too, that sense of community as a cancer patient um, is really important. It's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the tool also helps me recognize, unpack and repack things. You know, just whatever it is that I come in to talk about that day for that particular session, I walk out of there just feeling complete about it. Even if it's something that's really good, like sometimes I come in and it's like, I'm on top of the world. I just had a great scan, you know? And even that has to be balanced mm -hmm. somehow as an emotion in the, in the body. And so I feel better even with that. I consider it part of my adjunct therapy, similar to acupuncture, supplementation, diet, exercise. It gives me more purpose and intention and awareness around that. It allows me to see myself from the observation deck. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives me some mental immunity. You know, our immune system is, is how our body repels things that are bad. But I think Evox helps my mental um, ability to be immune to bad things when stresses, big stresses happen. You know, like you mentioned getting pulled over. We all get that anxiety where we get pulled over. Right. I get it before I even do get pulled over. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, and then finally, I think just, you know, life's ebbs and flows, that upshifting and downshifting of the body and being able to deal with the ebbs of a, of a cancer journey mm -hmm. is really, uh, a huge part of getting through cancer, you know, because life has its normal ebbs and flows, but I think cancer ex exaggerates them. Mm -hmm. You know, even a little thing can really set you off, even a tinge in your body. You know, I'll feel something in my wrist and I'll be like, oh, is that cancer in the bone? You know, there's all these right. spooky things that happen when you get this disease, right? And even if you get to remission or when you get to remission, you know, you always worry about recurrence. You always worry about that happening to you again and having to start over and go through that. And, you know, I think this is a tool that just keeps you in that resilient state of mind. Yeah. And so I'm really grateful for it. So thank you yeah. for coming today and sharing this. I actually got a lot out of this too, even awesome. though I've been doing it um, yeah. for a while now, well, but thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yep. Thank you for sharing. Yep. And before we turn it over to questions in the room, I'm going to just thank the Facebook world for joining us today and i'm going to close out. i didn't see any questions from them so okay i will close out that really quick